Hi, welcome to another scenario for the Azure Landing Zone Accelerator for AVS. Today, Jason Medina will go over egress and ingress natively from Azure VMware solution via NSXT or an NVA. So the agenda we'll go over is egress, ingress, internet traffic, the native route, traffic flow, AVS components involved, and AVS internet connectivity. And as always, you can find the reference architecture at this first link or QR code and the reference implementation at that second link and QR code to follow along. So Jason, let's talk about that native internet egress and ingress traffic. Yeah, so we have a feature uh, where we can go ahead and egress and ingress to the internet natively from Azure VMware solution. Uh, this is also known in our documentation as public IP at the NSX edge. And what this option does is it enables us to within our private cloud is we can go ahead and have public network IP addresses uh, that are dedicated to our uh, AVS environment. So and in this case, uh, we can go ahead and now do outbound snatting. We can do inbound snatting directly from the internet, um, as you can see here on the right-hand side. So we can go ahead and from the AVS directly on out to the internet inbound also as well. And for load balancing, you can go ahead and use an NSX advanced load balancer uh, from or third-party and uh, third-party virtual clients. And we also have the availability, as we mentioned, uh, being that we can have inbound traffic. We can terminate VPN connections directly to NSX. Uh, so now, uh, with if you have outbound connectivity, uh, I mean inbound connectivity, you can go ahead and go directly from the internet, go in and terminate VPN connections directly to NSX. So here we're going to go ahead and talk about traffic flow and what that looks like from the in egress and ingress internet natively from Azure VMware solution. Again, this is also known as public IP at the NSX edge. So now when it comes to our internet outbound, as you can see from an AVS perspective, we're gonna go ahead and uh, exit on out to our AVS internet edge directly on out to the internet. Inbound traffic is gonna come in through our internet, uh, within our uh, AVS internet edge, and directly to AVS. Okay, so does that traffic between AVS and Azure remain the same? Yes, so traffic between AVS and Azure still does remain the same. As you can see right here, we'll go ahead and um, discuss this. You're gonna have an express route connection uh, mm -hmm. still uh, back to Azure. And uh, when we go ahead and we start looking at some of our flows here, uh, one of the things you're going to notice is uh, your global reach connection traffic is still going to go out via your global reach which is this green line right up to on-premise and again uh, you're you're still going to have an express truck connection back to uh, azure and that's what's going to uh, give you that connectivity to azure resources and this is also you were saying ingress and egress to internet natively it's also considered what using public ips Correct, this is gonna be public IPs that are gonna be uh, dedicated uh, to the AVS environment. Mm -hmm. So um, will not be used anywhere else. So when, with that being said, you are going to have to provide Azure internet outbound connectivity for your Azure resources. So anything like, for example, your spoke VNet down here or any other spokes that may be connected to this hub, will go ahead and uh, use this Azure firewall or any other NVA appliance as you uh, as you may choose. And from there, we'll go ahead and access uh, the internet outbound. So Azure Internet Outbound will have its own uh, connectivity as well as inbound for Azure as well. So anything uh, inbound, in this case, uh, L7 HTTP inbound, or it could be uh, non uh, HTTP, HTTPS, that traffic will also uh, come in inbound uh, through Azure. So these are two separate internet connections and another thing to keep in mind is that although we are injecting a default route here, uh, this default route within AVS will never be advertised uh, to your Azure environment. So you don't have to worry about uh, that uh, getting impacted. Same thing with Azure. If in the event that you are advertising a default route, that default route will not get injected into AVS as well. So you don't have to worry about any default routes getting overridden between AVS and Azure. So we're going to go ahead and go over some of the Azure VMware 
solution components that are part of uh, that are part of this deployment here. And one of the things we want to go over here is our tier zero, our tier zero gateway that is always going to be deployed during your AVS deployment. And it establishes a BGP connection with the physical data center switches within our, within our environment. Uh, there is no need for additional configuration or modifications to the tier zero. Now you have a tier one, your tier one gateway is deployed alongside with AVS. It has a logical connection back up to the tier zero gateway and your public IP addresses are going to be assigned here. They can also function as a north south firewall if that uh, that is an option um, if you would like to have traffic uh, be filtered and inspected at the tier one level. If not, you do have the option to use a third party firewall, which you can go ahead and use an NVA. And this can replace your tier one gateway as a north south firewall. Licensing is not included with AVS and appliance lifecycle. Uh, is uh, the responsibility uh, of is the is your responsibility? So essentially, when you're going to go ahead and deploy this, um, you are responsible for the life cycle and the uh, of the appliance and licensing as well. Uh, even though you are deploying, if you were go ahead and deploy a third party NVA, the public IP addresses are still going to remain at the tier one gateway. Yeah. Uh, so it does introduce a little bit of a complexity to the design because you will need to also just keep in mind that although your public IP addresses remain here, uh, there will be some static IP addresses that uh, you will need to create because the next hop of uh, the, so it'll be static routes of your public IPs with the next hop of your firewall virtual IP address. Okay, so yeah, you mentioned the IPs remain on the tier one gateways, so you need that static route to the third party NBA. What about if you wanted redundant NVAs? Is that supported? Yes, you can use uh, redundant NVAs. Uh, in this case, uh, you just want to make sure and keep in mind that when using redundant NVAs, as anything with uh, with VMware, that you're using uh, anti affinity rules mm -hmm. uh, within vCenter to make sure that these appliances are not on the same ESXi host. And um, yeah. from there, you're just pretty much doing the same configuration as you would do as if it were on premise. And uh, whether you're using a tier one or a third party NVA, the NSX distributed firewall can still be used for east west traffic. So, traffic going from uh, one site, well, it could be within the segment from one VM to another or uh, different segments. You will go ahead, you can still use the east west firewall for that. When deploying this option, um, you also want to keep in mind, again, this is also known as public IP down to the NSX edge. So you want to go ahead and choose this option right here. This option right here is what's going to give you the capability to go ahead and have those public IP addresses deployed down to your tier one gateway. So here we have some step-by-step -step guides. And with these step-by-step -step guides, we have our first one here on how to deploy public IP addresses to the NSX edge. This is if you were to go ahead and deploy it natively without any uh, third-party NBAs. Uh, if you do decide to deploy it with some third-party NBAs, we have another option here, uh, which is NSX Edge with NBA. This is how to deploy public IP addresses down to the NSX, NSX Edge with third-party NBAs. Uh, so we have some, uh, some great resources within our GitHub uh, that can pretty much help you accomplish this with, according to best practices with NBAs. All right, and then, as always, we have Azure Landing Zone updates. So if you go to this page, you will see the latest updates for the Azure Landing Zone. We have the dual region update. So aka.ms avs-dual-region. And then also the design basics for networking. There's the link above aka.ms avs design basics to help get you started in your networking journey, making the right decisions. So because something you decide upon early on can impact something later on in your design. So we have a lot of walkthrough basics for you there. Okay, so wrapping it up uh, with, this, with this deployment, there are a few things to keep in mind. With internet connectivity, internet traffic for AVS workload will natively egress out of AVS. Native Azure resources maintain a separate connection to the internet egress and do not have AVS for internet connectivity. So keep in mind that when doing this deployment, uh, your Azure resources will have a separate internet uh, connectivity egress. 
and so will your AVS resources. Uh, terminating VPNs directly to AVS is possible. Uh, for North, North South firewall options, you can choose to either uh, deploy a tier one gateway or a third party NVA as your North South firewall. Public IP addresses, regardless whether you're deploying a third party NVA, your public IP addresses will reside on a tier one gateway. East West traffic for East West traffic, you can still utilize the NSX distributed firewall. For your load balancers, for AVS workload, uh, you have the option to use third party load balancers or NSX advanced load balancer for handling ingress traffic. For traffic flows, always keep track of your traffic flows. It makes life a lot easier, especially when it comes to troubleshooting um, and um, any, any uh, architectures that, were, that you'd like to do in the future for scalability. It just helps a lot more when you have a great understanding of your traffic flows. Accelerated deployment, uh, please always, again, uh, consider using our Azure Landing Zone accelerators to help expedite deployments. Great. And Thanks so much for that. And here you can see the additional resources. Like we said, Landing Zone Accelerator helps accelerate your deployment with best practices and standards in place. And we have Azure documentation, network design, the product page. We try to document as much as we can and share it out with you. Jason goes over a lot of network scenarios. So it was great having you back, Jason. Thank you for having me. Thank you.